2017. Our regular meeting is. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a new term, actually, since inauguration. Uh, Mr. Clerk, how are you doing? Doing well, Mayor. Good right. seeing you. Okay, let's go with roll call. Looking sharp. Mayor Joseph? Here. Councilman Bienname? Here. Councilman Desume? Here. Vice Mayor Galvin? He's back there. Thanks. Councilwoman Keys? Okay, Mayor, we have a quorum to Thank proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, stand up, please, and face the flag as we go f with the Pledge of Allegiance by Officer Emmanuel Ocean from North Miami PD. I please place your right hand over your heart and I repeat with me. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to and the, the republic, republic for which it stands. stands one nation, one nation under God, God and indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Now we may be, uh, before we sit, we'll ask for Pastor Derek Allen, Dr. Derek Allen to please come forward and lead us in invocation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to share very quickly from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, just as a reminder for all of us. Scripture says this, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Just a reminder to those of us who are here that we are submitted to your authority under the authority of God, and a reminder to our honorable council and mayor that you serve uh, at the responsibility uh, of being under the authority of God. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us, a day that has been a gift. Lord, I pray that as we come towards the end of that day that we have invested that gift well. And Lord, I pray that the next few moments we have together will be a further investment uh, that will count, that will matter, uh, much beyond the moments that we'll be together, much beyond this day and the next. Lord, we pray that this day will be a day that we will invest so well that we'll, it will count for eternity. Father, I pray you would give us wisdom a wisdom beyond ourselves, wisdom beyond our own knowledge. Lord, would you give us insight into the matters that are before us? And Lord, would you give us the boldness and the courage that it takes to do the right thing and to seek your wisdom and to seek your guidance? And Lord, we pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much. Please be seated. At this time, I would ask the manager to please well, the deputy is here. Let's go over any addition, deletions, amendments that you may have so we may proceed. Mayor, at this time, I don't believe we have any additions or deletions to the agenda. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Attorney. So I understand the agenda is now set and we may move forward. Uh, yes, sir, the agenda is set. Thank you very much. Now we'll go down and just go a few special presentations. The uh, <coughs> first special presentation we have is a very, very, very special one, but I do not see the birthday girl in the audience. Where is she? 
you didn't come? Oh, now I'm disappointed. This is a proclamation being, no? I know, I know. This is a daughter. Yeah, I know, I'm not kidding. This proclamation is being presented to probably the uh, oldest person in North Miami, right? She's 107 years old. 107 years old. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Ismelia Kanki Pierre. <laughs> but I'm sad because she's not here. I was looking forward to hugging her and kissing her and everything. I think we did this, what, two years ago? Was it two years ago when we honored her? So, but we'll just deal with the daughters and. July 3rd, okay. You, you may come forward, Jimmy, to get it. Come over here. Okay, this proclamation is being presented from the city of North Miami to Ismelia Conky Pierre. I don't have to read everything, do I? Whereas Mrs. Carbeno Pierre was born Ismelia Conky on July 3rd, 1910, in Paris. Not Paris, France. It's a little area in Hollande Bay, Haiti, commonly known as Seminaire Lembe. And whereas Ismelia married Carbeno Pierre and was blessed with 11 children, six boys and five girls, and whereas Ismelia's residence, after the loss of, of six children during their childhood, and the loss of the longtime companion, Mr. Pierre, in 1993, at the age of 85, astonished the family. And whereas, with her faith in God and the love and support of her family, Ismelia will return, will turn. 107 years old on July 3rd, 2017, with full vision and lucidity. And whereas Ismelia has been resident of North Miami since August 2001, and upon her arrival from her hometown in Haiti. And whereas the city of North Miami acknowledges Mrs. Pierre for her courage, resilience, and with continued blessing. Now therefore, in, continue in consideration of the foregoing, I present you as the mayor and, and with the entire fi the city council, this big proclamation to give to me, not for you, <laughs> but for Mrs. Melia Kipier. Thank The next certificate of appreciation is being presented to Jonathan Jean-Charles. Jonathan Jean-Charles, are you in the audience? <laughs> Mr. Jean-Charles is a seventh grader at the top of his class with a 4.0 GPA at Aspira Rem Charter School. Jonathan possesses excellent communication skills. She has, he assumes responsibility for his learning. He promotes collaboration and has innovative and un entrepreneurial mindset. Jonathan re recently participated in Aspira's first annual Startup Technology Expo and won first place wow, with his mobile app, Excel, Extra Learning Excel. That's what it's called and business plan pitch. Jonathan was featured at the Miami, in the Miami Herald Business Edition, and uh, he was the winner of the fast pitch. Miami Herald stated Jonathan was a fan favorite for sure. Before the student fast pitch competition started, the student networked with the audience and wore name tags that said, ask me, for, ask me to pitch. 
Jonathan was an aggressive network, and he didn't, he didn't wait to be asked to tell us about his business idea. At the end, Jonathan was the winner, beating the middle and high school students and bring home the first prize for his category. With that, Mr. Jean-Charles, the city of North Miami bows very low before you to let you know that we really appreciate you. Now, you got to say something. I know you have something to say. Okay. Beep, beep, beep. Oh. <laughs> Um, I don't really have a lot of words to say. All I got to say, I'm very honored to be recognized for such work. All I got to say is one thing, like my teachers have, have been telling me for a long time, as you can see Ms. Jeannie right here, I'm thanking her for her support. That, that's your teacher? No, she's a, she works for the office. office. Okay, she can and with her daughter, Veronique, her daughter was also supporting me. My parents, my sister, my baby sister, the one with the little... Both things. Oh, <laughs> Philip Bannerman, he was at the Expo too. Cool. Yeah, you him. To to explain what the app is. A little bit about the Can app. Can I just get a pitch? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to explain first. Well, a pitch is like, you guys know baseball? Yeah. So like a pitch, when you hit the baseball, when you like pitch it, it's got to be fast. So they say one minute pitch. Okay. Have you ever ex experienced someone who struggled with understanding reading comprehension or mathematical strategies? Well, this could be pretty tough. Nowadays, approximately 37 million K-12 students, like they have access, they don't have access to certain educational resources. Because the reason why is because there's a lot of educational disparities in the inner and the suburban cities throughout metropolitan cities in the US. Like for example, you know, Carroll City, like in my school we have tablets and stuff like this, but they don't have like textbooks or things like that. So that's one of the concerns that we identified, one of the things that we want to help solve. So what EXO does, it helps provide learning elements for K-12 students to help make learning equitable. We also help, we also like provide a, a precise, unique educational experience to help students, to help promote their intellectual growth and to help promote their participatory engagement. So that's pretty much what EXO is. In our first year, we, we, ex we expect, well, I already know we're going to have about 5,000 downloads. I know for sure. <laughs> yeah, so the reason it will cost us about $10,000. About $10,000 to start the business first due to the trademark fees, the copyright fees, and we have to purchase the um, educational resources. I already did some research, so I plan on working with, you guys are familiar with the Common Core? Yeah. Huff and McGlyphon, so yeah. So I'm trying to make a, what is called an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, but it's called something else. It's called an NDA, a DA, a conf I don't know how to pronounce it, <laughs> confidentiality <laughs> agreement. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 that's pretty much it. So the reason why I called it EXO, well at first it was supposed to be Project 8 EXO, because I wanted to create an app to like help with projects, because you know how you have to get the borders and everything? But then I was like, oh, it's boring. So my friend just, so I was like, Excel. I'm like, what is Excel? And I'm like, extra learning helps do this Excel. So it just came with it. Well, some people say extra large, but it's not extra large, it's extra learning. We're still in session, we're still in session. The meeting is still. The uh, next certificate of commendation is presented uh, to Safeguarding American Values for Everyone, Save. Who's going to get it? This is going to be presented in honor of LGBT Pride Month. Whoever is here to receive it.
Okay, this is presented uh, to Tony Lima, not Peru Lima, but Tony Lima. <laughs> <laughs> In honor of Gay and Lesbian Pride Month, on behalf of the City of North Miami, we commend you for your dedication, commitment, everlasting support, service, and caring for the members of the LGBTQ community. Uh, community. Your devotion to promote, protect, and defend LGBTQ equality is held at the highest regard. Presented to you the 13th day of June, 2017. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I, I'm Tony Lima. I'm the executive director of SAVE. And for the last 25 years, we have been the voice of the LGBTQ community in South Florida and beyond. And this is a, an incredible honor. Thank you so much for this honor. Um, this is a city that I am very close to because I lived here for many years. Um, so it's, it's a place that I still call home and I appreciate what you all do. And thank you, Councilman Scott Galvin. He is one of our champions of equality within the LGBTQ community and we're very proud of him as well. Um, so thank you for this great honor. Thank you. Okay, I understand we have a very, very short special presentation by attorney Andy Hellinger. Is it Hellinger or Hellinger? Hellinger. Hellinger. All right, he's the trustee for the Condo Association at the Oaks at the Biscayne Landing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I haven't had the privilege of being in front of the council in a long time. Uh, that's a good thing. Yes. Uh, and I ha I've, I've met you once, but it's good to meet you tonight. And I, I thank you, uh, members of the council, for giving me this, this time. As you know, I am the receiver of the 151 at uh, Biscayne uh, condominium Association, and I've been in that position now for seven years. When I was appointed, this was a condominium project that was not complete. The city had leased the land. The association was insolvent and needed a lot of help. You've just handed out a lot of certificates and acknowledgments tonight, and I came here tonight to thank the council, the city, its citizens for the support that it gave to 150 one Biscayne, back then it was known as the Oaks at Biscayne Landing. The building is complete, the certificate of occupancy has been issued, and the building is in operation. And it, it would not have been without the support of the city, and over the years that I've been here, I've seen a lot of <coughs> infighting at the city and disagreements amongst council members on positions, but one thing that was steadfast by every member of this council whether it was the mayor's office or, or a council member, was that the 151 project ought to be complete. It ought to be a place that people can call home and it ought to be something that the city is proud of. And so Mayor Pierre at the time, this, this council has changed quite a bit and so have the mayors. Mayor Pierre, I remember coming in front of the, uh, the council the first time and he said, we want to give you the land, we want it built, I want it built in a year. Uh, we knew that wasn't going to be possible because of the issues in Biscayne Landing. But nonetheless, he was a big supporter. And uh, 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 Councilman Galvin, we could not have done this without your steadfast support for the residents at 151. <coughs> and in the opposition to many of those uh, other developers that wanted to come through and do some crazy things next to us, I, I remember the sky rise moment. And so th I know that the owners at the Oaks are very appreciative of all that you've done. Councilwoman 
uh, Keyes, you were not on the council when I started this project. You are at its finish, but as a private citizen, you were vocal and a supporter, and so the residents thank you. We could not have done it without all the support of many that have, have served before in the council, such as Councilwoman Sterrell, Councilman Bland, yeah, Councilman Marcellus. Uh, Councilman Benamine, I'm sorry I left you out. I didn't mean to do that, but yes, you, you have been here and you did help us and we appreciate. But the city also had some pretty terrific uh, managers that, that helped us out. I dealt with Manager Springer on land lease issues before he was manager. But before that, we've been through a manager, manager Bedford, uh, Bedford Johnson, uh, Ghani, and all of which have been big supporters and, 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 and uh, we've been happy to work with them here at the city. And finally, <coughs> you have a chief building official, Mr. Pizzullo. Um, when we needed to get this construction going and needed to get it moving, he, he, um, he, he really helped us out. And so I really came here tonight to, to thank you for the city's support. You all, the city deserves uh, an, an accommodation and recommend and, and, and certification that and recognition that uh, it can come together for the, for the right reasons for good people that live here. And so we thank you on behalf of the 151 Condominium Association. Thank you very much, Mr. Hellinger. It was a pleasure <laughs> having you. And uh, I must remind some of you that this is our first meeting since the last election. Three of us have been, no? That's our first meeting, no? Yeah. Three of us have been re-elected uh, from District 2, uh, Councilwoman Keys, District 3, Councilman Bienemé, and your humble servant, Smith Joseph, as your humble mayor. Now, I have become a lame duck mayor, so in two years or in one year, you, start, you can start campaigning uh, for my seat as I will not be running e e per charter. It's free for all. So the next person we're going to welcome tonight is very special to us. It's one of our, ours, uh, she's now in Tallahassee, representing the uh, District 38 at the level of the Senate, the Honorable Daphne Campbell, who's going to give us a brief overview of the legislative uh, session update. Good evening, everyone. Oh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I don't understand. I said good evening. I heard only one voice, and the voice of that little boy just spoke earlier. He said, good evening. Oh, you know, I know I'm well represented. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right. Good evening, Mayor Madam Senator. and Council. Um, for those who don't know who I am, I'm Senator Daphne Campbell, representing District 38. And I'm proud and humbled and privileged to say, you know, you guys and everyone at the city of North Miami chose me to represent them as a first ever Haitian senator in the state of Florida. You guys don't clap for that? Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. I'm talking to lively people. So anyway, um, for past session, 2017, and we just went back last week for a special session in Tallahassee. I was able to really represent North Miami well, and I, my staff just passed a brochure to all of you, and you could see what I have done in Tallahassee. Truly, you know, it was a very hard session. It's a lot of things was going on in Tallahassee with, with the two chambers, the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House, and Governor Scott, all three were fighting. The governor Scott want, you know, the EFI and visit Florida money. The, my president wants the land and speak of the house need. You know, everyone have their own agenda. But in the middle of all of them, the citizen of Florida suffering. But we, as a legislator in Tallahassee, we were your voice. We made sure what we needed, you know, carried on. For not Miami, I was able to, with the hard work, two o'clock in the morning, I was at the president's office, and I have to say thank you to Larry 
you know, your city manager, who was in Tallahassee, working very hard with me, with Natasha, to make sure I carried a million dollars for me to build a center at uh, Councilman, you know, BNMA. Thank you, Councilman BNMA. We work very close together. But unfortunately, Governor Scott vetoed that million dollars. The reason being, let me make it clear, is not he vetoed it because, you know, it's not a good project. It was uh, some misunderstanding when the, the state filed the projects, they put it as a city, uh, not Miami Foundation. So not Miami Foundation, under leadership with the uh, council woman, Keith, thank you very much too. She did came to me last year to bring me a project for not Miami Foundation for seniors meals. And the money was vetoed last year, but with God's grace, this year, they got $50,000 and it's not vetoed. Thank you, Councilwoman Keys. So you did a great job. So we have that money with uh, State Representative Roy Adamant. He represents North Miami as well. So I do have everything here because I love transparency where the, the, the form where North Miami, you know, they, they fill out this form to me and State Representative Roy Adamen for the two projects. And one of them only vetoed, but we do have one. And Natasha, thank you very much too, because I remember she was on vacation when I called Natasha. I said, Natasha, I need this right away, right away. And she said, but I'm out of town. I said, I need it now. And she said, but said, Senator, please, can you give me tomorrow? So she did it and we, we filed it and we got the money. But unfortunately, one is vetoed, but we have one. But um, the Haitian lawyers got $45,000 and it's not vetoed. Just like St. Lan, they have money too. It's not vetoed, 50000 So what I'm saying, you know, in Tallahassee, you have to have the right voice for you. And we have a lot of bill who passes. It's, it's, it's in the book, booklet right here. All the bill pa who passed and all the bill who failed this year. But I was able, in one of my bill, and that's only one who really went to law, and I passed it in Tallahassee, where I asked, you know, uh, Congress to make sure the Independence Day, January 1st for us is national holiday, and uh, May 18th, Flag Day, national holiday. And I do have State Representative um, Barbara Watson as a support in Tallahassee as well, with, um, with uh, Representative, huh? yeah, Haitian American as well. We passed that month of May. So we passed that. So the bill now signed to law May 9, and I could tell you the state of Florida now, the Haitian kids could carry their culture, and they don't have no problem because we voice for them in Tallahassee. Representative Ababa Watson, myself, and we have uh, our jacket as well with the bill. So we're gonna send it to Washington and ask President Trump to make sure we recognize all these holidays as national holiday for Haitian community. So you're here, Mayor, and we working very hard in Tallahassee. And as a good news for you, let me tell you, um, the mayor and I, we've been working very hard for the constituents of North Miami. And I'm gonna give you a big news who's coming very soon, shh. where the mayor and I, you see he told me shh. So the mayor and I, where we're gonna, we, we, we're supposed to meet this week, to create first time ever in the city of North Miami, the Senator Daphne Campbell and Dr. Joseph Smith, mayor of city of North Miami legacy, where we're gonna have shelters for people who are losing their homes in the city of North Miami. So North Miami is on the move, right, Mayor? This sure is a is. big project. <laughs> so before the mayor, come on, give us a good hand. This is a big project. You don't know how many people come into my office on a daily basis, they lost their home and they don't have nowhere to go. And just last week, it took us almost three days. We have this young lady with three kids, came all the way from Palm Beach, and she been on the street for six months. Bishop Curry picked her up and they paid two weeks hotel for her. And the lady was on the street, came to our office, and my staff, you know, this is my <laughs> chief of staff, Liz send up for everybody to know who you are. My chief of staff, Liz Honoret, and we have Mary Aliency, that's Miss um, Patrick Aliency's wife. Stand up, Mary, let everybody know who you are. That's Patrick. Come on, give them a hand. They work very hard in the office. Yeah. 
So basically, they worked so hard for three days, and we were able to you know, put this young lady with three kids to a shelter all the way to where? Pompano? Pompano Beach. And next week, they're going to give her a permanent home. And in the office, we do food stamp for her, Medicaid, and we give her everything she needed. So our office has been working very hard in Tallahassee and here in the community. And I'm working very, very close with the council and the mayor to make sure the resident of North Miami is well taken care of. So I love you all, and thank you for choosing me to represent you in Tallahassee, and I'm gonna continue to work harder, and the money Governor Scott vetoed, and I'm gonna tell you, Larry, we're gonna ask this time for five million. We're gonna make Governor Scott pay for that veto for this year. One million vetoed, and we're gonna quadruple the one million and ask for more money and we will get it. So may God bless all of you, and I love you all. Thank you very much. Our dear Senator, first Haitian elected uh, to Senate in the state of Florida. We are also blessed uh, in our midst that we have in the lower chamber in Tallahassee, our dear Barbara, Barbara Watson, in District 107, who's going to brief us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, and the dear citizens of District 107. Uh, tonight, I come to give you just a brief update on what has transpired in Tallahassee. We consider ourselves not necessarily the lower chamber, <laughs> but we call ourselves the equal chamber. The equal chamber. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I didn't mean to. Uh, mm, it's OK. <laughs> we're, we're working on the governor now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well. My dear and honorable Senator Daphne Campbell has given you some of the updates and some of the projects that have been vetoed, as well as some of those that have actually passed. She's talked about the proclamations and all of the resolutions that have gone through. That is very important. But I want to bring a couple facts in play that I think is important that we address. We need to look at the school board budget. Well, yeah. overall, our budget for the year of 2017 was $82 million. $82.4 billion. Now that's important for you to recognize. <coughs> that's a lot of money. But some of the things that took a hit in this session was in spite of all of that money was the school board budgets. The amount of money that was to go to public schools for each student was increased by $100 per student. But the, the, it equi it's also equivalent to 2.5 $215 million that works out for each student getting that <coughs> extra $100 per student per year. Well, that sounds like a lot of money. But we are so far behind when we look at the overall United States and the number of dollars that are given to each of our students, we rank number 48 in the United States for funding our students. So I say that we have a lot of work to do. We've accomplished a lot of things, but we still have more work to do in Tallahassee. Through negotiations and, and trying to come to a conclusion in, in this three-day mini session that we had, we saw $60 million <coughs> that was given to 17 universities and the, and the state of Florida uh, University. Uh, in other words, Florida State. And this is important in that negotiation, and that came through the Senate. The Senate president required that that be part of the negotiations that transpired. Otherwise, those particular universities <coughs> in our state, 17 of them, would not have been getting any money because it was vetoed by the governor. So it's really important how we see the money coming back into our community and making sure that we get all that is <coughs> necessary for the education of our children. We're going to be talking about one of the other deals that transpired in this mini session, and it was having to do with the dike around the Lake Okeechobee. And you want to say, why is that important to us? It's extremely important because that water feeds directly into the Everglades and eventually ends up in your tap. And as long as we can make sure that that dike is in place, we need to make sure that that happens. <coughs> now, generally, that dike and its repairs are funded by the federal government. 
but it was one of the pet peeves of the governor to make sure the ample money, $60 million, was set aside to make some repairs while they negotiate with the federal government. Personally, I think that that was a very good move for the governor and all of the residents of South Florida because it ensures us to still have quality water, drinking water every single day. And making certain that we do not run into an issue where we run out of water in South Florida. One of the other things we want to talk about is tourism in the marketplace program, which is commonly known as Visit Florida. $85 million was given to the direct control of Governor Scott. Governor Scott. I personally want to say to you, residents, that this is important for the, this, that Visit Florida moves forward. It is important because you have to spend money in order to make money. In order for us to attract tourists, visitors, and keep tourism high in the state of Florida, we have to advertise throughout the rest of the nation and across the world to attract visitors to our, com to our country, <coughs> and more importantly, to South Florida. If we do not spend these dollars, people will eventually lose. And we've seen other states that did not spend the appropriate amount of dollars to make sure the, visit, the, the tourism stay up in their state. This, in my opinion, is a great move in order for us to make sure that we maintain the level of income because Florida is a state which enjoys a great deal of tourism. We need to talk about how, at the last minute, the state of Florida dealt with medical marijuana. That was a last ditch effort in our negotiation in a three-day <coughs> session. The voters of the state of Florida in November of 2016 decided that they wanted to have the opportunity to um, have legalized marijuana. I want to let you know that I believe the entire system in which we are dealing with to set up this program is flawed. And I'm going to explain to you why I believe it's flawed. There was a standard of measuring each of the five companies that originally were supposed to participate in distribution, also the growth, and also having it on the storefronts in the state of Florida. Two of those particular awardees did not really meet the standards. <coughs> and after that was discovered, there was a lawsuit filed and the judge agreed that two of those companies, had they been scored properly, would not have been one of the original five. So to me, that process is completely flawed if we have alleviated others from being a participant who may have been more qualified than the two that was put in. It was the state's idea to rectify that problem by simply awarding two more licensees, moving it from five to seven. I don't know and I don't believe that that's the way we would treat our students in school. If they didn't make the grade, we give them the grade they earn. We don't simply allow them to advance forward and replace them with two more or add two more to the list. We are in a situation where we have at least five of the qualifying people who have been factored in to be a part of the mar legal marijuana uh, distribution, warehouse selling growers are not qualified <coughs> and not at the standard. I am concerned when we have had other people through the pigment lawsuit, which many of you may not know what that is, that has to do with the black growers in the state of Florida who were not allowed to participate in major projects for the state of Florida. When we, did, when we held out those qualified black farmers and allowed two farmers to move forward that did not meet the standards, did not qualify properly, I think that there's something flawed with the system. Though when we rectify this system, I think we will have a good product. But I think when we start out with the original five, and, and what I would say to you, with ch tongue and teeth in hand, we're talking about creating a junior mafia, the haves and the have-nots. Those five companies are going to be trillionaires. 
But when you allow someone who's not qualified to participate in the program, I think it's wrong. I think it's greatly floored and we should go back to the drawing board. So those are some of the things that I found that were very, very detrimental. Uh, I'm so grateful that the Senator has in, encouraged you with all the positive things, but I certainly wanted you to see the, the both sides of the coin and how it has played out in Tallahassee. And I want you to realize that every day we were there, it cost this community, as well as others across the state, $70,000 per day. <coughs> Something that we got done in three days when we had 60 to do them. Mr. Mayor, Council, I thank you for your time. The citizens of District 107, I thank you for the honor and the privilege of serving you. And I will continue to serve you with all my heart. I am truly an individual to which I serve the people. It is not grandeur <coughs> on my part. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, C. Uh, actually, I have just one question. I know we've, we're very pressed for time. It's almost 8 o'clock. But, but I guess this is our opportunity we need to ask some questions about issues that are germane uh, to, our, to our community. The, I cannot, can you explain, can you explain, either one of you can explain to me because I still, I'm still trying to find out how is it that the Medicaid expansion did not make the 2016 ballot? Mm -hmm. I mean, with, with all those thousands and you know, millions of people we have that are without a medical insurance, and for years now, the Obamacare, you know, they've been offering with Scott, you know, to accept, you know, federal money so we can subsidize Medicaid. And still, he refuses to accept federal dollars uh, to, uh, to provide Medicaid for the people who very need it. I mean, it is my understanding that they needed about like 700,000 valid signatures no. to po put it on the ballot. Yes, but they only managed, you only managed to get 2,000 out of the 700,000 that was needed. I mean, to me, it seems that there was some efforts that was supposed to be made and then uh, yet was not. I mean, Medicaid, I mean, is, is a very important you know, factor for our, you know, for, our, for, for our state. Mr. Mayor, mm. uh, what you just said, uh, truly, it's just a rumor. That's not true in Tallahassee. Yeah. The bottom line, yeah. The governor do not want Medicaid expansion. We've yeah. been fighting Medicaid ex expansion since 2011, yeah. since I've been e elected. And um, the president of the Senate was trying last year to do something, and I wasn't senator yet, trying. Mm -hmm. And the, s the House didn't want to take it. The speaker didn't want Medicaid expansion, period. The Republicans, they said very clearly, they're not accepting you know, Medicaid expansion on both chambers. So we, as a Democrat, as a matter of fact, what we had done two years ago, you remember? So two years ago, we were like a 49. So we, we, the, we were like a um, um, 39. So majority, we're not majority, but at least. So we went for three days straight track where we closed everything. All the bill has to be read, even if it's 16 pages or 100 pages. So, so even though we did that, nothing did happen. So they're not gonna accept it. They say we could do as much we want as a Democrat. They claim we don't have no voice. No, so I mean, they I'm are not, majority, I'm not so that's what too. happened. I, mean, I know I'm singing to the choir here. I mean, if it were yeah. for you, I mean, we would have had Medicaid expansion. But, you know, but I, I guess it, uh, we still have to fight. Even continue our, fighting. Know, continue fighting correct. until that happens. Correct, correct. So th thank you very much. I don't know if there's any other yeah. questions. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, just unfortunately to add salt into that wound that you're discussing right now. Uh, the, this year we have actually cut another $520 million on the Medicaid in reimbursement for hospitals. I can assure you neither of us supported that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this is the kind of atmosphere in which we're working in. And when currently in the House, we are 41. <coughs> when the senator was there, it was 39. So we still don't have, we have enough to keep them from having a super majority, but we don't have enough to really affect the outcomes. And on top of that, Mayor, um, for the special session, 
So they remove $100 million from $200 million we are located for hospitals. So with this special session, who cost the state of Florida, all you know, citizens, $70,000 per day for those three days we just spent for nonsense, and they didn't do nothing for those three days. The three days only to please Governor Scott to get $85 million for Visit Florida. That's all. It's, it's, it's just uh, it's a sad story. It's like a slap to all our citizens. But we, as a legislator, as a voice for you, so we didn't go for that. But three days cost taxpayers $70, 70 million dollars per day, per day. Seventy thousand dollars per day. But seventy thousand dollars per day is a lot of money yeah. for you know 120 members in the House and 40 senators in the Senate. It just right. don't make no sense. Thank so you very and much. nothing was done. So this is what happened. Thank you very much for coming, for spending time and update us. And thank you. thank you, Mayor. Thank yeah. you, Council. Uh, see the events. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff, members of the public, special invited guests. My name is Cassandra Timothy, Public Information Officer, and I have the pleasure of sharing all of the exciting events and programs in the city of North Miami this summer. The South Florida Cultural Consortium identifies, supports, and celebrates regional artists promoting the appreciation and production of the arts in South Florida. The Museum of Contemporary Art will host an artist reception on Thursday, June 15th from 7 to 9 p.m. Admission is free for MOCA members. North Miami residents are free. The, exhibit, the exhibition will be on display from June 8th through August 6th. This Saturday, June 17th, join Councilman Alex Isome in District 4 for tree planting, tree giveaways, and more. The event will take place at the Joe Selingson Center beginning at 9 a.m. Summer is upon us, and the North Miami Parks and Recreation Department offers summer camps for children and teens. Summer camp includes an array of indoor and outdoor activities. For more information, contact the Parks and Recreation Department. Join the North Miami Public Library for the 2017 Summer Reading Program, filled with events and a summer reading contest. Sign up today by visiting the library and meet Merlina, the magical storyteller, on Tuesday, June 20th, beginning at 10 a.m. for a magic show. The Sole Mia local preference, office, local preference Office, in partnership with Sunshine Workforce, will host LPO Registration Day on Thursday, June 22nd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. City of North Miami residents are invited to attend and take the opportunity to apply for a full-time, part-time, and temporary position offered through Sunshine Workforce. Qualified residents will have the opportunity to interview for free scholarship offered by the LPO in various construction trades. For more information, contact the Solimia office. <coughs> Join the City of North Miami and key organizations for a community emergency preparedness workshop. Learn how to keep your business, organization, and community safe through any potential disasters. Resources and tips on how to prepare and recover will be provided by key organizations on Wednesday, June 24th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. right here in the council chambers. Stay tuned by watching our free governmental programming available 24 hours a day through the city's website, www.northmiamifl.gov. Like the City of North Miami on Facebook and follow at Nomi News on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Timothy. Our next, we're gonna have a quick, very quick update by our dear, is it Commander? Commander Brinston, please come forward so we can have some updates on uh, hurricane preparedness. We see that it's probably going to, uh, what is it? Yeah, quickly. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Mayor mm. and Council. Uh, Angelo Brinson, Emergency Management. As you all know, uh, hurricane season started June 1st and runs through November 30th. At this time, we in the city have held several training sessions to prepare all of our employees. We've uh, reviewed all of our response policies and procedures, and we've been checking our equipment for operator operational readiness. And at this time, we are prepared to handle any event that occurs. And also at this time, we're not tracking any storms out in the uh, Caribbean or Atlantic. That's it? Yes, sir. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Geimer. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public, and city staff. Um, Jeff Geimer, Capital Project Manager for the City of North Miami. I'm going to briefly run you through a few of the projects that we have going on in the city at this time. 
um, through, um, and these projects are all updated on the city's website. So if you go to North Miami's homepage, NorthMiamiFL.gov, you can go to capital improvement projects and find information on all these projects. Um, under the, um, I'm gonna run through just a couple of examples. Um, so if under neighborhood improvements link, If you go into that, it lists number of projects um, on, th on the site that are cur currently going on in your neighborhood. And one of the projects that I'm going to um, briefly tell you about is the Northeast 4th Avenue Streetscape Enhancements Project. That's one of the projects that's new to the site because we've recently begun work on that. And what you'll see here is some before pictures on the bottom of the site. And you'll find the information on each of the projects. It, it lists the, the project's name, uh, basically the project boundaries, um, the scope of work for the project, the projected project timeline, and uh, the project team, which would be the city staff member that's responsible for it, along with any consultants or contractors that are working on the project. Um, so that's just an example of one of the projects um, that's currently going on. Another section, and you can see when you go through the site, it has uh, detailed information, and as pro pictures become available before, during, and after, we'll update the site with those as well. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just, since we're short on time, take you one of the recently completed projects. And um, what it is, the last one on the site was the one that was most recently completed, is the roadway improvements, roadway resurfacing project. And again, you'll see some before pictures, and then as you click through the site, some during pictures, and then some after pictures. Um, these are the, um, most of these pictures um, are through throughout the city, um, but we've just picked a few of them just to highlight. But you'll see that we've done a, a lot of work in the city in this area. Um, the project, the projected timeline for completion was June of 2017. We actually brought this in in May of 2017, so we finished a little bit ahead of schedule, and um, you know we're working our way to make our, the city more beautiful. A um, couple of updates that are going to be coming at the next meeting. We're gonna have um, T.Y. Lynn presenting on the downtown 125th Street streetscape improvements project. And we're gonna have EBS Engineering presenting on the rights of way conditioning survey. Um, the rights of way conditioning survey was recently completed and T.Y. Lynn's gonna give you that update on downtown. Um, if you have any questions, I can answer them or we'll just go ahead and move on. Thank you very much. Thank you, have a good evening. All right, I believe the next item is the consent agenda, but I believe there was a question on tab B. You want it to be moved? I'm sorry, Mr. Sora, can you use a microphone for the public's mm -hmm. benefit? Yeah. Yes, through the mayor. Um, at this time, we ask that tab B on the consent agenda be removed that off of the consent agenda and removed from the discussion today. We will be bringing it back at the next meeting, the 27th meeting, okay. for the discussion. Uh, we need a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. With, with tab B be being with removed. With tab B being removed. So moved. Second. I have a motion made by Councilman Desiree to remove tab, I'm sorry, to approve the consent agenda with the exclusion of tab B as amended. That motion was seconded by Vice Mayor Galvin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Item passes with a 5-0 vote. Ten tab eight. No, go ahead. Tab O. I have the right agenda, right? Mm -hmm. O. Okay, tab O. Mm -hmm. Proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, authorizing the city manager to issue purchase orders to AUM Construction, Inc. in an aggregate amount not to exceed $129,500 for the design and installation of electronic speed feedback signs piggybacking Miami-Dade County request for price quotation number 201-60045 pushback contract for traffic signal improvements providing for an effective date and for all other purposes. And that was tab O. Uh, staff? All right. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Alberto Estrade, Purchasing Department. Uh, the item that you have before you is staff's recommendation uh, seeking your approval to issue a purchase order to the company AUM Construction Incorporated in the amount of $129,500 
for the design, permitting, and installation of 18 solar electronic speed feedback signs throughout the city. Uh, this award is based on a piggyback of a county-issued contract uh, that was uh, solicited by the county on May 20th, 2016. Uh, the company that uh, we are recommending is a company that was pre-qualified and selected by the county for this specific type of work. Uh, I should point out that um, all traffic control and traffic engineering devices located within the county are under the exclusive jurisdiction of Miami-Dade County. So therefore, uh, that was one of the major considerations that we used in selecting this firm and making this recommendation. Uh, also with me this evening is Mr. John O'Brien. He's the transportation planner for the city of North Miami. And I'd like to have uh, John also uh, make a few comments regarding this recommendation. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, John O'Brien, Transportation Planner. Um, this is a very important uh, uh, item. Uh, we've had uh, requests for a long time to get these electronic speed feedback signs installed. And we have the actual physical signs, but we need someone uh, with the experience uh, to get it through the county and to get them installed. And it's a, it's a pretty complex installation. Uh, they have to go eight feet underground and um, uh, to put these signs in. And it, it, it's a piggyback, but I'm gonna say in name only because um, these guys are the only ones in the county uh, that have been approved to install these kinds of signs. Uh, so it's not just a, a, a financial thing. And um, Alberto, um, oh, here, you, okay, we, we have him here, and he'll attest to the fact that he was beat up anyway by Alberto. Uh, we actually got the price uh, lower than what's in the, uh, the piggyback bid. Uh, we got it for uh, almost 2,000, a little less than 2,000 each less than uh, what was in the, the county bid. So it's not just a piggyback, it's really getting the people that know how to do this. Uh, I do have... Uh, draft locations for where they'll be installed. Um, I have it as a handout or I could put it on the screen. Oh, Dunia already put it up? Great. Let me see if I can do full screen somehow. So we have uh, 18 locations. Well, uh, nine locations, and it's two signs at each location. And these were based on a uh, traffic calming study that was done a couple of years ago by Kimley Horn. Uh, we went to the county to ask for a lot of different devices, including things like speed humps, um, but the <coughs> speed feedback signs uh, were the one thing that they agreed to in principle. And the locations that were picked, were again, were in the study uh, and were a result of looking at the speed and volumes for each place. And these were the ones that got the highest um, amount of points for both uh, speed and volume. Now, there are a couple of locations, let's say Keystone Boulevard, um, which is getting humps. So they would not be getting the speed feedback. You don't get a, the feedback signs and a traffic circle. You get one or the other. Uh, so there's, a, there's another location that we've recently agreed to do a traffic circle, Northeast 10th Avenue. Uh, so we're putting a traffic circle there, which is a higher level of uh, uh, traffic calming. So these are the, the, the locations that are being recommended at this time. And if you have uh, uh, any comments or questions, because I've got other traffic studies yeah, as well. Some or I have some questions. Yeah. Uh, you do, you want to go first? Because my mic is up there. I've been asking for those for months. I agree, two, two uh, things. I don't think these should be 
I didn't think Keystone was getting the speed humps without removing circles, et cetera, so we're not necessarily getting s humps because nobody wants to get rid of our 30-year-old traffic circle. Number two, the worst speeding, highest speeding in this city is the Broad Causeway, people coming from Bay Harbor, and we are missing a light there. That is, that is the worst. They're coming over there at 60 miles an hour, coming into North Miami. I don't see a little green square there. Um, these are not, these are local roads. So um, FDOT is working on, on putting those there we need, we for need your request. Right. Yes, they're, they're definitely, there. uh, they've and already put them on 135th and they're working on that one too. So the state roads are, are, are handled <coughs> by, by FDOT. These are local roads. Are we getting something on, what are we doing on Broad Causeway? We need, we need FDOT out there. It took me 15 minutes this evening to go four blocks, as long as you're talking about it, four blocks from the bridge to Biscayne Boulevard, at least five or six lights. You could not move. Um, well, you're, you're speaking to the choir, but... And uh, so they weren't speeding because you couldn't move. But if you're moving, they're flying over from Broad Causeway and they're flying 60 miles an hour. So we need help there. Lights, pictures, whatever it takes. Thank you. I, I agree, and and, uh, and and please readdress Keystone because I don't know, we oh, don't oh, really Keystone. know what's going. If we're not getting the humps, we should get these also on Keystone Boulevard. Yeah, and and just to clarify too, um, this item is is about the the contract for installing. Mm -hmm. So I, I, we may, we may discuss later about the exact locations, and okay. uh, and also when you're budgeting, we may want to put some more in for next year. Okay. Uh, but this is just for. Uh, you know, wherever we put them, we want to make sure that we're ready to go with this contract. Yeah. Mr. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, Mr. O'Brien, I understand you say the study from Kim Lee Horn was the determination of the location, but when I met with the manager and I addressed this to him, I'm very <coughs> concerned because I only see two locations in my entire district. And I don't know, well, l let me finish, sir. I don't know how you would um, figure out, I don't know if you're talking to the police department or however that their studies is, are being done. Because not only we're getting calls, I've witnessed, um, especially around um, Ben Franklin, around um, Pepper Park area, all the, um, a lot of these areas. On 441 and, and, and 17th, I see one. So disproportionately, I don't know how you would, the largest district in the city you will place two versus uh, the east side getting um, majority of these um, so. devices. I know um, Councilwoman Keys has some concern because we talked about um, Broadway Bard because I used to go to work um, in Bay Harbor there. That's a concern. So I, I don't really buy the study um, that Kimberly Horn and I don't, first of all, how, how old is the study? That's number, number one. And number two, can you, with your met methodology, can you talk to the, either the police um, department folks who are local on the ground um, and kind of readdress this because I really, this is not really sounding too pleased to my ear. Well, I, I'll, I'll work, yes, I do work with the, with the police department um, the and I have access mm -hmm. now to the, to the crash. Uh, right. But the study was actually uh, funded uh, by uh, Councilman BNMA um, a couple of years ago, and the reason it, it looked mostly at the areas, uh, um, you know, his district, because he was funding this study, uh, and also Sunkist Grove had their own study, and from how that study ago? we how installed ago, uh, 11 traffic circles yes. in Sunkist Grove. So th there has been, but I 100% agree with you. Okay. They need more, and uh, I think I can work, uh, you know, under the manager's direction, work more with the police to, to identify areas. So we'll expand this. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Uh, do you have anything to add? No, I just say with my councilman, uh, Alex Dezel, made that yeah. that's something we've been working on for years. Yeah. Even before he was a council member and uh, the district funded the, the entire <coughs> study and uh, the residents of the district been asking for either traffic circle, speed bumps, or some type of relief about uh, the speeding in the district. That's why you saw it like that. All right. It's not stuck with this type. 
At this time, we'll ask the public uh, to please come forward. If you wish to be heard on this item, to please come now. I see no one coming, so public hearing is closed. Any other further discussion? Move approval. Second. Second. I have a motion made by Com Vice Mayor Galvin to approve tab O as is. The motion was seconded by Mayor Smith-Joseph. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Item passes with a four to one vote. Tab P, as in Paul. I'm sorry, before you go forward, I want to acknowledge the presence of former Mayor Burns. Uh, he's among us. And I believe I saw former Councilman Despinos as well. He may have left. Welcome among us. Go ahead. Tab P is in Paul. Proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami limiting items on the consent agenda to only those matters below a maximum threshold of $50,000 providing for authorization and an effective date. Staff, staff, do you have anything to add or say? Well, just uh, this is an item that was sponsored by uh, Councilman Desume uh, regarding yes. the agenda item and uh, just a limitation, so I'll defer. Uh, um, I think this is time to pee. Yeah. Th thank you, Mr. Manager. The, um, the reason I proposed this resolution, I've been receiving a lot of calls, not mainly from residents, not even in my district, um, because a lot of time, and even us up here, when we vote on things on consent agenda, um, although the public um, have access to it, but at the same time, a lot of folks do not have the computer. They, they don't go online. They don't read the agenda as thorough as it should. And over the past few months, a lot of things just been kind of going on and up as far as what appear on the agenda. So out of transparency um, and keeping government open, I think we should have some type of limit. Now, I am open to increasing the amount. I, I thought 50000 um is, is okay, but sometimes we see 100000 Sometimes we see 99000 So if it's going to be something, we, we just want to set something, and I'll, I'll ask my colleague um, to come up with something where we'll know this is the threshold that should be on the consent agenda versus um, any just thing. We'll just put it, put it out there without the public know. Right, uh, let's get uh, some opinion from the uh, public. If anyone wants to be heard on this item, item P as in Paul, I see no one coming, so public hearing is closed on this item. We're back to the dais for discussion. Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. through you to the manager, our current limit is 100,000 to be on the consent agenda. What is the current limit? Well, I think technically we don't have one, but we've been operating, uh, I think, historically at 100,000. So prior to my being so manager. That's two different yes. stories. Right. That's two things. Your proposal, mm -hmm. anything over 50 shouldn't be on the consent, consent agenda. agenda. That's Correct. not, he's not asking for the limit. That's not yeah. what. Yeah. He's I, 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 yeah. I, it's two different. I'm the old man up here. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this discussion Perfect. before, mm -hmm. and I am pretty darn certain that we set the threshold limit. of consent at $100,000. We thought so. Or less. <laughs> Um, oh, excuse me, or more. Okay. I could be mistaken if we never codified that and put that in the rules. I'm cool. I'm cool with fifty thousand. I'm cool with putting everything on the regular agenda and not doing a consent. I'm cool with whatever. But I thought I remembered that one hundred thousand was our existing we threshold. I thought we had when something. when this item was brought up, we did the research along with the city clerk's office and could find no resolution, ordinance, or anything um, codifying that. But I wouldn't I be surprised if one of your predecessors just didn't codify that. Right. <laughs> but said, our understanding is it is 100,000. That's you how know what we decide? We, we pass a resolution saying the city manager cannot spend more than $25,000. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. When it before us for approval. Right. But I, and $100,000 for construction work. I could certainly be but wrong. Not to be on the consent but my little my little old man bell is going off and saying we've had this debate before. It was one hundred thousand dollars. I will second um. I will second Councilman DeSulme's motion that it be a fifty thousand dollar threshold. But but, but but let me ask this. 
any item, I mean, it is my experience that any item on the council agenda, uh, before the agenda is set, we can pull out, any of us can ask to pull out yeah. any item and, dis and discuss it. So this is, this is a moot, I mean, to me, this no. is moot. Okay. If you can pull out the, the, the item anyway, no, Mr. Mayor, it's yeah. not. It, it's out of transparency, out of folks who doesn't have a computer, out of folks who's home. Um, a lot of things, when you put it on the consent agenda, it's kind of jammed to, like right now we had um, item A through N. I don't know majority of the folks in the audience or at home would even understand or kind of know what, what, what we just voted on. So I'm not saying that it's not good. I'm just saying we need to... To not only to protect ourselves, but also to be transparent to the public. If it's something if it's over 50... Sorry, if it is on the agenda, mm -hmm. it is transparent. Well, Ms. So uh, just because we don't want to take time to read the consent agenda item by item, that doesn't mean that it's not tra transparent. As a matter of fact, don't we get... I mean, we're supposed to get the, the agenda a couple of days bef before meeting. Mm -hmm. That's what we get elected to do, to read. We just take it home in our bathroom, in our showers, backyard <laughs> we read the damn thing on because that's what the people on red miami elected us to do to make sure that before we come to the meeting we know what we're coming to uh, to vote on Absolutely. i mean that's that's Can I yeah my two cents <laughs> yeah, go ahead. thank you um i have always been very vocal against consent agenda items but i think when they're just purchasing items like tonight we had three items two are in the ninety thousands um we had one in 73,000. I think it's a matter of doing business. Um, Mayor, you've been very good for the council where in the past uh, some former mayors would not allow taking something off the consent agenda. We have not had that issue yeah, in several probably, years, yeah. so we don't have that issue. If someone sees that we have something over 50,000, call their council person or bring it up to the manager and we can discuss it. But I think this gives us a little leeway to get our business done without having to you know, be, be petty about something just because it's, if it's not controversial, it's just a purchase item, let's just do it. So I'm not really in favor of limiting it right now. And on top of that, Mr. Mayor, the consent agenda is a recommendation by staff. When up here, we always can move an item yeah. from the consent agenda for the to discuss it. To dis uh, for discussion. I think we are the policy maker. It's like, we are putting things against ourselves when we the one who's supposed to work on behalf of the people to explain them exactly what we want to do. Uh, and whether it's 50, 25, anything can be changed from the consent agenda to pull it out and discuss it. Pull it out for discussion. Mm -hmm. We do that every day. Well, 